August 6, 1945, a moment in time that would mark one of the most historic yet disastrous events to take place to date. President American Truman ordered plane, to drop an atomic bomb on Hiroshima, on Japan, Japan to end World War II. The bomb exploded over the center of the city, destroying everything within a one-mile radius. Three days later, another bomb dropped on Nagasaki, Japan. Both resulted in over 100,000 deaths, although an official count is unknown. This concluded World War II. This may be the only example the world has to comprehend how powerful and threatening a bomb can be. But what about the world we live in today? If a terrorist detonated a smuggled nuclear weapon in a city, would we know who did it? Will we be able to make that determination quickly? The experts at the Defense Threat Reduction Agency have teamed up with the national laboratories and others in the DoD to create what's known as the Discrete Oculus Sensor Program. So the Discrete Oculus Sensor System is a uh, program to instrument cities with a bunch of different sensors uh, designed to look for seismic, um, acoustic, optical, um, infrasound, uh, radio frequency, uh, other various types of signatures out there in the event of an urban nuclear detonation. Um, so worst case scenario happens, a bomb goes off, uh, these sensor systems are designed to uh, pick up what they can, the data is then analyzed, and the data from those explosions that is picked up by the sensors uh, really goes out and helps the U.S. government to uh, attribute uh, who did the event. At this particular location, optical, infrasound, seismic, and radio frequency sensors are being used. The optical sensor watches for the flash of light coming from a nuclear weapon to help determine the design characteristics which provide insights into how the device was made. The infrasound sensor measures low frequency sound waves created by distance explosions to help determine the yield. The radio frequency sensor monitors for the radio frequency signature of a nuclear device and also provides insights into the device. The seismic sensors in the basement measure tremors created by nuclear blasts. Although it's not a sensor, the mast is at every sensor site. It provides communications and weather conditions unique to that particular area. The system also uses additional sensors employed at other sites to measure air pressure and radiation to help determine more about the device. The inputs from these sensors, which are networked together at multiple sites, will significantly shorten the timeline to attribute a nuclear event. Putting together and placing all of the sensors at different locations was not an easy task. However, with many challenges and hurdles, it was well worth the reward. But the greatest part of this job is working with the people. Uh, and it's very interesting that uh, part of the most resilient piece is that the people really want to help. They want to do a good job. They want you to succeed. In many cases, it's those personal relationships that has actually helped the program. Uh, they've found other creative solutions and have helped us to achieve our schedule. The most rewarding experience on this program has been seeing the technology go so quickly from a research and development to an actual fielding status. Uh, typically in acquisition, it takes years and years to get anything from the R&D community out to the field. Um, and DITRA in conjunction with uh, the nuclear forensics community and OSD has been able to push this thing out incredibly quickly. Uh, just in the scope of three years we've gone from a, a truly R&D program and it still is R&D but we've gone to the, the fielding stage uh, more or less prototype uh, and it's been great to see that happen so quickly. Reporting from DITRA SCC WMD, I'm Tanya Smith.